Y sale aquí nuestro status. Hello, everyone, and good morning, and welcome to our Google Lunar Team Hangouts. Uh, this week, we have folks from the team Synergy Moon, and uh, this Hangout is brought to you by the Google Lunar X Prize Foundation and is hosted by myself, Dr. Pamela Gay. I'm coming to you from CosmoQuest, where we help you map the moon so that teams like these can go and explore it in our not-too-distant future. Now, we are taking audience questions throughout this Hangout, so if you would like to ask any of our participants a question, you can use the Q&A app. Uh, that should be visible no matter what page you're on watching this Hangout today. I, I have a wonderful international team with me today. Uh, we have Emir Tanovic uh, coming to us uh, from uh, uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, we have a Kevin Murick coming to us from the United States. Uh, I have to admit, I forgot what country you're coming to us from, Neb. Uh, so we have Neb Stanojevic. Where are you from? I'm originally from Tuzla, from Bosnia, but I'm from all around the world. I lived the last 25 years all around the world. So I come from I come from space. <laughs> that that is is excellent, and then we uh, have Randa uh, Milliron, who is also here in the United States, and and I have to admit, looking down the the roster of all of the different teams for uh, who are competing for the Google Lunar X Prize, this was a team that really stood out as being truly global and and having a lot of highly varied backgrounds that you you brought to the project and I'd love it if, if each of you could uh, tell us a bit about what brought you to this particular team and what inspired you to get involved in uh, basically trying to get yourselves or at least your very cute little rover to the moon in the not too distant future. Uh, Randa, I'd love it if we could start with you. Uh, you're muted. Hold on. Let me fix that. Are you good? Yep, you're good. Okay. Uh, um, I was originally in the um, the first uh, X Prize uh, as a contestant with our our company, Interorbital Systems, and we were building a a rocket uh, to try and win that prize, but. You know, when someone else who's competing gets $30 million, it's a little hard to catch up. <laughs> and, and that's the, the Ansari X Prize that was yes. won uh, by, by Scaled Composites, I believe. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, But we were working on rockets long before that, and we had always had a moon program uh, kind of simmering in the background. When we founded Interorbital Systems, we also founded a nonprofit called Translunar Research, which was dedicated to the colonization and commercial exploitation of the moon. And uh, so that, um, those projects uh, were being, uh, uh, you know, worked on it as we were also developing uh, our own rockets uh, to basically ply our trade throughout the solar system. Uh, the, uh, uh, the way we got involved with the, uh, with Synergy Moon is um, uh, apparently uh, uh, the group heard about our um, our private uh, lunar sample return mission that we had uh, planned for roughly 2015-2016 and uh, we were invited to join because we're already building a moon rocket we had something uh, that could carry uh, the, the team's uh, rover to the moon and uh, so we were very happy to join up and, and, and we this makes the lovely eclectic nature of the team as well and we're, we're both, uh, uh, when I say we, uh, my husband Roderick who's the main designer and I are both artists and scientists, and uh, for us, the, you know, those are just the, you know, that, that's the pinnacle of, of, of endeavors, if you can combine those, uh, you know, those two elements in, in a project. Uh, obviously, it's, there's going to be fun with it, and uh, it's going to be super exciting. 
And and the involvement of interorbital really makes the Synergy Moon team fairly unique because you do have, as one of your team's partners, the people putting together your rocket. You're not buying time on a rocket that is, is perhaps uh, at somebody else's hands to decide to launch or not. Uh, that, that must make you guys feel pretty good about how you're moving forward. Um, Kevin, it, where where did you come into this this great collaboration? Still muted. Nope, we can hear you. Um, okay. Um, well, I was a space enthusiast. I belonged to a lot of different um, space advocacy organizations, and I ran a couple of um, websites uh, dedicated to space and a couple of forums. Um, we watched the Ansari X Prize. We're very interested and followed that avidly. Um, when the Google Lunar X Prize came up, I saw it as a perfect opportunity. So I uh, put together a small group of people and we formed a team. Um, and we registered as a letter of intent team. Um, we looked around for probably about six months to a year uh, trying to, to build a team. And one of the things that we saw in that time was uh, a second team. Um, the team in Europe, which was at that time called the Human Synergy Moon Project. Um, and they were um, a lot like us in that they were a combination of uh, engineers, artists, uh, social activists. Uh, so we kind of started talking with each other uh, and we decided that we would merge our two teams together. Um, at that time, uh, a third person who kind of wanted to be a sponsor for us introduced me to Randa. Uh, so we talked to Randa, I talked to Neb, and we kind of formed Team Synergy Moon. Um, at that time, it was a combination of the Human Synergy Moon Project and Interplanetary Ventures team. And, and Amir, you're coming to this from the European side of the collaboration. What, what brought you into getting to the moon? Well, uh, from when I was a little one, I was dreaming uh, of Can you please speak a little bit louder? I'm sorry. Yes. Since I was a little kid, you know, I was dreaming to be an astronaut. And uh, it was turns out that I was uh, an astronaut. And I feel with my father, I got the strength of the Latin plants. And in 2010, we had a family here. We had seven days of the summer. And uh, then I met uh, Nabosh, and uh, he came uh, to me as our uh, guest to speak uh, about astronauts and uh, within our exercise and everything. So uh, it was very interesting to me uh, that I met somebody from my own city who, are, who is involved with the space, you know, and uh, that's a good stuff. So, uh, finally, we get together, and uh, from 2011, from January, we have been joined uh, the Teach Synergy Moon, like education and outreach. We promote uh, astronautics and uh, space traveling where we can. Also, we are doing lots of um, star parties, lots of education and outreach for the children. We have a uh, tree section of astro robotics. And uh, we are in almost every school uh, in, in my city and uh, furthermore. Uh, this education uh, about astronomy has been, has been uh, shown to, to, to people from Bosnia and we came and find lots of people interested in the space, astronomy and everything. That, that's excellent. And, and now you're one of the ones that uh, travels all over. How how did you get connected as you co-founded uh, TSM with all of these wonderful people? Uh, <clears throat> I watched a documentary about uh, Ansari X Prize, uh, and uh, when I saw that uh, it was a documentary uh, of, of the winning of uh, Ansari X Prize uh, in the end. So when I saw that, I was really you know like uh, almost crying watching the documentary. And uh, then that stuck in my mind. After that, 
After I went, I went to sail around the world, and when I was in the middle of Indian Ocean on a small sailing boat, I was looking up in the skies and thinking, when I finish sailing around the world, what is next to do? And then I said, okay, just to change ship for the spaceship. So when I saw the Blue Lunar X-Prize, that is now possible to do something like that. And for actually, for, for uh, Ansari X-Prize, for, for uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, for, for Virgin Team and everything, you know, I would really go there and bring the coffee just to be part of that, doesn't matter what. It was really like, okay, first time possibility to do such a thing. As, as a private thing, and of course, I always wanted to, to float in zero g. That was, and this is uh, this is how I started. And then when uh, GLXP came out, uh, I formed a team with uh, because I, I by going around the world and doing all the things, and uh, I met lots of people. And I have lots of people who are really engineers who does submarines, artificial intelligence, this and that. And then I just said like, okay, maybe this is possible. So we put team together. Then uh, Kevin contacted me uh, at certain point, and then we, because we were very similar mind, uh, mind thinking people, or how we call it, uh, we decided to join our teams together. And uh, another thing is really because we come from a uh, former Yugoslavia, ex Yugoslavia, which is now Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Slovenia, doesn't matter. And we never had a space program. So, the one thing is really just to show, uh, just to show our people like, hey, we can do whatever we want to do, and this is the reason why we, why we kick it. And by the way, out of all the uh, for, for the GLXP and everything, I believe that uh, former Yugoslavia, which is like six countries, that more people per capita knows about GLXP, and not only about our team, but about GLXP than in every other country because. We are in the main news. We are all over the papers. We are, you know, whatever happens, you know, uh, we we are news for so many years because hey, look. Uh, in in the beginning, everybody was ridiculing us, you know, like like something like that. But then, bit by bit, by bit by bit, especially now with the last launch or uh, test launch with the uh, interorbital uh, random ro rocket, you know, everybody really now start cheering. Wow, let's you know. So now everybody started believing. And this, uh, and also, you know, sharing this with, with the kids, with everybody, just to show people, hey, it's, everything is possible if you set your mind to, and get good group of people around. And I'm good, you know, how to say, I call myself switchboard. I'm good to find people. So that's about it. And and one of the things that that I deeply appreciate about Team Synergy is just how interdisciplinary you are. You have. Uh, folks that are working on active engineering tasks and getting all of your technology constantly moving forward at a steady rate. You have the education arm that's pushing things out into the school and then you're also working to inspire people through arts and I'm hoping that through the rest of the hangout we will get a chance to touch on all of these different things but at the end of the day this is a race to the moon and you guys have recently got to have uh, some really great testing and, and I'd like to go back to you Randa and I'll work on uh, uh, pulling up the the launch test video um, I guess flight test video um, you want to, to give us an intro while I pull up the video yeah uh, are you um, we also have a uh, we did a number of engine firings uh, uh, prior to uh, to doing the launch because we, we develop our own engines we don't depend on Russian engines <laughs> and you know that that's that's become a problem recently, as we were chatting before. But um, uh, we do absolutely everything in house, and, and getting a good, reliable propulsion system is really the first step in any rocket company. It's been about a 15-year development for these these rockets. Our, our propellants are uh, white fuming nitric acid and turpentine, and uh, we we are. You know, we take quite a different approach than most people do. Uh, we have high density storable propellants, and uh, this is important for uh, for uh, interplanetary uh, travel. Uh, we uh, you don't have to uh, really babysit the propellants like you do with cryogenic, uh, like liquid oxygen and other cryogenic. So for us, this was a, a, a simple solution, and, and simplifying the whole system was the main goal in uh, in inner orbitals approach. But we have uh, come to the point where we're now entering our uh, our uh, commercial activity, and the uh, test flight of the uh, what we call a single common propulsion module. That's um, the the rocket, the orbital rocket, and the moon rocket that we're building are made of identical modules that are bundled together. So developing this this particular um, 
engine and this particular uh, uh, single unit, uh, basically Lego for the uh, uh, the whole uh, system, was really a huge milestone. And uh, flying it uh, was also a milestone because we we had four payloads on board. They were paying customers, and it was really uh, for us as a company. Uh, it was the first day of going operational as a as a commercial rocket company. Uh, so uh, this launch is uh, it, it tested a number of um, uh, actually I don't know Pamela do you have the uh, rocket engine test or do you have the the flight um, video? I was trying to pull up the flight video. We're gonna have to watch it through YouTube. I, I apologize if there's any quality di difficulties with this. Um, there's a bit of DRM on the video it appears like. So hold on and I'll have that up mm -hmm. in a. But plan. as we. Uh, we we basically uh, tested uh, uh, a um, a uh, cable launch guidance system. Uh, we um, uh, actually uh, tested the the whole the whole rocket controller, uh, the um, rocket system in flight, uh, a recovery system, and we provided uh, for those payloads. And, and incidentally, those those uh, payloads on the suborbital test flight, uh, those customers have booked flights on our orbital flights, which are coming up probably, I would say, right around the turn of the year, somewhere around the beginning of 2015, it looks like right now. They are some of the 81 payloads that we have uh, booked. Uh, so uh, they uh, tested the, the whole the rocket controller, uh, the um, rocket system in flight, uh, a recovery system. And we provided uh, for those payloads, and, and incidentally, those those uh, payloads on the suborbital test flight, uh, those customers have booked flights on our orbital flights, which are coming up probably, I would say, right around the turn of the year, somewhere around the beginning of 2015, it looks like right now. They are some of the 81 payloads that we have uh, booked. So uh, they tested uh, the whole the rocket controller. Uh, Okay, are we up in real time? <laughs> yes, we're in real time now. Okay. Uh, yeah, the that you just ran the, the uh, uh, video of the uh, test firing of the engine. In order to make sure that the engine works properly, we do these so-called uh, ground uh, ground tests. They're hot firings, hot static firings. Uh, to measure the thrust and uh, to make sure that everything's working properly. That was a, incidentally a 24 foot long flame on that oh, on that rocket. And um, uh, that suborbital test flight provided those customers as I was mentioning uh, uh, and one of which was um, a kind of a notorious payload, the John Frusciante of the Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, launched, uh, launched uh, his new album on that uh, on that rocket. As well as uh, uh, the, um, the Cheng Kong University of, of uh, Taiwan, uh, with their 2U uh, CubeSat Taro, uh, the M2M to Sky and, and Boreal Space, uh, M2M to Sky from Brazil, Boreal Space from the Bay Area, uh, launching their uh, Wayfinder One uh, satellite prototype, and uh, Synergy Moon payload as well with communication system on it. Uh, all these um, all these payloads came back uh, after experiencing uh, about a 5G takeoff. The rocket uh, achieved a Mach 1.5 uh, velocity, and uh, we uh, we got those payloads back. They uh, when we recovered the rocket, which came back pretty much intact uh, on a parachute system, we uh, we saw those little lights blinking, and all the payloads were alive and returned to their owners. So everybody was extremely pleased. It was a completely uh, successful launch, and, and a few minor tweaks that we need to do. But you have to uh, find that out, find out what might be a, you know, a slight problem. You fix it uh, after your flight. Your flight tells you a lot. So the only way to really learn how a rocket performs is to fly it. 
So, so we do have the flight test video now. We recovered the rocket, which is much intact, uh, on a parachute system. We, uh, we saw those little lights blinking, and all the payloads were alive and returned to their owners. So everybody was extremely pleased. It was a completely uh, successful launch and, and a few minor tweaks that we need to do, but you have to uh, find that out, find out what might be a, you know, a slight problem. You fix it uh, after your flight. Your flight tells you a lot. So it's the only way to really learn how a rocket performs is to fly it. So, so we do have the flight test. I'm sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. I'll, I'll try one more time to get it up. <laughs> sorry, I, we're, we're having trouble with your, your video. Um, let me try one more time to get this one to play in a different browser. Well, if, they, if you can't get it to, to show, they can find it at interorbital.com, I-N-T-E-R-O-R-B-I-T-A-L.com, and it's on I, the page. I got it to work in Safari. It turns out that uh, there's an incompatibility with the ad blocking software I have running. I apologize. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Uh, we're, we're having your video. Um, let me try one more time to get this one to play in a different browser. Well, if, they, if you can't get it to, to show, they can find it at interorbital.com, I-N-T-E-R-O-R-B-I-T-A-L.com. And I, I, I got it to work in Safari. It turns out that uh, there's an incompatibility with the ad blocking software I have running. I apologize. Oh, I got it to work in Safari. It turns out that uh, there's new compatibility with the Apple software. Uh, okay. Ignition sequence started. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So, so what was it like to see your baby finally fly? Well, see my rocket finally fly was really exciting. I mean, it was a, it was terrifying. It was exhilarating. It was, um, it was uh, really, really almost, almost uh, slightly horrifying, but slightly, uh, uh, you know, but overwhelmingly uh, uh, an extremely positive uh, kind of a. Kind of a, a moment, the, the the terror that comes from launching a rocket like that is, you know, it's a it it, it weighed 1,200 pounds. It was, you know, full of uh, uh, very energetic propellants. Uh, anything could have happened on the first flight, but the fact that it was sitting there inert, you know, for for many many you know many moons in the in the in the lab, and then to see it spring to life with that pillar of fire was was you know astonishing and wonderful. Uh, I, I can't think of anything that I'd rather be doing than building rockets that do work based on that pillar of fire. It's just it's <laughs> amazing. It's amazing, you know, just just amazing. Now, uh, Team Synergy or Synergy Moon, rather, is uh, focused on getting a rover on the moon, and the the goal behind the Google Lunar X Prize is to successfully. Uh, land on the moon, get a vehicle transported 500 meters, and then send back video to the planet Earth. And the transported 500 meters, lots of different creative solutions are coming up. It can be rovers, walkers, flyers. You just have to get that 500 meters. And and your team is, is working on um, a beautiful little wheeled robot. Uh, it, would someone like to discuss the the rover that your team has uh, put together for the competition? Well, uh, I can do it uh, since we are <coughs> making it 
here in Boston. Awesome. Uh, two years ago, uh, we agreed that uh, we should build uh, all over from here. Uh, I gather around a uh, team of uh, experts in the field of uh, uh, mechanics, electronics, programming, you know, and engineering. Uh, what well, I uh, have uh, the team leader of uh, mechanics is uh, Professor Gaskin. Uh, he is a creator of, uh, of the lower chassis and uh, everything. And uh, we have uh, more guys working on the solar panels and electronics. Uh, so uh, basically what we do, uh, we have made the prototype and uh, we are right now testing it. What we put inside, it's uh, lots of uh, motherboards, uh, Wi-Fi controller, so we can operate uh, yeah, laptop or uh, Android or iOS device. So we can run a uh, long distance uh, with the cameras on the board, and I think you have a, a video to show. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I can go ahead and pull that up. You know, there's a bunch of what I do. We have made the prototype. And uh, we are right now testing what we put inside. It's uh, lots of uh, motherboards, uh, Wi-Fi controller, so we can operate uh, uh, yeah, laptop. really neat video showing uh, the, yeah. the robot's eye perspective on the world, which I think is always a cool one to have. Um, there was a kid in that video that was clearly captivated. <laughs> and and I love how your team is, is working to engage arts and humanity uh, all together in, in captivating people with the space race. What what are some of the things that, that have been most exciting to you? The Red Hot Chili Peppers launch. Uh, what what other programs would you like to highlight for our audience? Now maybe you can well, take this one. Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm just thinking that everybody is involved in some way in the arts uh, on this team, and uh, uh, just as a, 
a sideline, uh, interorbital uh, also has uh, in its, you know, among uh, the, these uh, 81 payloads that I was mentioning, there is a Synergy Moon Telescope. And there are also, uh, in addition to pure science payloads, we have, I think, about five different arts uh, and music uh, satellites that are going to be launched. So uh, that, uh, the fact that that space is, is really being opened for uh, people other than just, uh, you know, just scientists, uh, I don't say that lightly, just scientists, but uh, the, uh, the rest of the population can consider doing on-orbit uh, activities uh, now that uh, you know the prices are coming down and uh, access will be available, so uh, we have a, a space opera from Mexico. Uh, we have um, uh, a uh, project that'll sonify the ionosphere and send down uh, sounds for musicians to use around the world. We have uh, space art projects. We have all sorts of things in addition to you know, the standard uh, types of micrometeoroid measurements and. Uh, uh, communication experiments and those sorts of things, but that so from our side, uh, this is working. But um, you know, the other people in the in the group have had, um, you know, like Deb, and, uh, particularly has had uh, lots and lots of uh, arts background. So maybe he can tell you a little bit more about his his uh, angle on it. Yeah, uh, I say I'm a, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a producer, and I'm coming from all sorts of things. But my parents are professors, both of them. Uh, as Kevin is also a professor. So for me, the, the, the biggest highlight is kids, 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 kids. You know, that there is no two. I, I, I leave to this, all these experts, Randa and everybody, you build the rockets, rovers, and everything, but we focus on kids. You know, show the kids that it's possible, because these kids, they grow up very quickly. Now with new technologies and everything, they're going to fly these things, you know, by the age of 15, not uh, me, age 45. So it's just kids. You know, I've been involved building uh, schools in jungle of Guatemala, and, and especially underprivileged kids, not, uh, you know, kids with uh, MIT, Harvard, blah, blah, blah. No, we can do it in a backyard, uh, you know, in every single school, especially now with internet, that you can interconnect people, you know, kids from everywhere. So. You know, uh, you never know, you know, all the smart people, uh, smart people, innovators, they come really from, from very funny backgrounds. Uh, yeah, I don't know, are you aware of, but Nikola Tesla, the one that we can thank for, I mean, you know who the Tesla is. Tesla comes from one village very close to my city, you know. So, you know, you, you, you and our rover is called Tesla in, uh, I'd say, in honor to this great visionary. You know, we, have, uh, we are visionaries and we are trying to, 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 to inspire, uh, you know, for me, really, okay, winning the uh, Google Next Prize, it's, it would be really, wow, great. But inspiring, you know, to be last man on the moon out of all these things, I would be more than happy, honestly. But to inspire the kids, you know. Kids, this future generation, you know, now they are flagged with all this, blah, 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 you know, all this blah, 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 blah. So what we are doing is go to schools, get the kids to do stuff, you know, get them hands-on. This is where Tana is doing a wonderful job, you know. He, he put all these primary, uh, you know, primary schools and secondary schools and with the really kids, kids, and they love it. They just don't believe it's... You know, these are the things that we used to watch on TV. Now it's like in your hands. Hey, and, and we are like real people. You know, before that, cosmos you cannot even touch. Now it's like, oh, this can go to the moon. Oh, good, great. And hey, that's, that's about that. It's about kids, if you ask me. And also the musicians and, uh, you know, all, all this other art stuff and everything, because uh, I have uh, really lots of very good uh, high-ranking friend, friend uh, in, in a music art world and also as a skydivers because we also have a project uh, running together uh, parallelly with this one which is called Free Fly Astronaut Project for the first, uh, first person that is uh, with Olaf Zipser who is one of the best skydivers in the world uh, who will jump uh, from uh, Randa's rockets so it will be first skydive from, from the rocket uh, and as a diff uh, and it's also for the safety in a bailout system for the future uh, Cosmonaut. So we are into how you say, into funny. You know, let, let, let's make it funky. No, let, uh, space used to be boring, really. Now let's make it funky. That's, that's how I see it. it. Doesn't have to be suits and ties and everything. It can be. Let's have some fun. That's for me. That's well, for actually, me. Actually, right. the the uh, the the advent of the uh, it's really the dawn of the of the personal satellite and. Uh, um, 
in 2009, Interorbital Systems came up with an affordable uh, tube sat kit, that, like the tube sats that are uh, uh, that were hap happening at that time. Uh, the radically reduced kind of almost like a handheld satellite, uh, very tiny, affordable, and we decided to offer our kits and launches uh, to academic groups for $8,000. That was a kit and a launch. And this this really sparked uh, 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 interest uh, uh, worldwide, uh, you know, from from the tiniest villages in Brazil you know, through uh, uh, places in the most recently in Slovakia, in uh, uh, Sweden, in uh, Canada, in Mexico, huge, huge interest in Central and South America, where uh, people as as young as 11 are in programs building uh, building our satellites with the help of their space agency, and uh, so there's a whole crop of students who who actually get to build a satellite that will that will go to space. And I I certainly wish I had had a program like that when I was in elementary school or middle school or, or you know even at, at a university that wasn't possible but now it is so CubeSats and TubeSats made from our kits uh, give people actual hands-on uh, satellite building experience and it then becomes your personal satellite so nothing could be better than that and and you sent right. me this, yeah, this some of those uh... go ahead some of those projects that Randall was mentioning before, the music projects, uh, the Calliope project, uh, there's one project that's uh, reading radiation signatures from space, uh, turning them into MIDI signals and sending them back down to turn them into music. All of those are being built using uh, some of Randa's tube set kits. Um, and as a, as a team, Synergy Moon, we also have uh, an arts program um, to uh, gather art from anyone all over the world to take with us to the moon. We want to try to have the first um, interplanetary gallery. So we want to be able to take some art to the moon and display it with projection. We want to be able to take some uh, audio art to the moon uh, and broadcast that back. Um, we're collecting art right now from people all over the world who are submitting audio files and uh, video files visual art files. Um, so we have a, a big push to take the arts and the humanities into space with us. Yes, that's and our big moon museum piece. You know, portable museum. And, right. and I deeply appreciate that you're helping people actually get started before you're going to the moon using moon bounce technologies to at least send the signal round trip while we wait to be able to send the content round trip. And that's a great way to get things started before um, you're, you're already launching there. Now, how can people get involved in submitting artwork, in, in finding out more about how they can be involved in, in all of these programs? Kevin? Well, we have a couple of, we have a couple of ways. Um, we have a call out right now for people to submit video and artwork uh, that you can uh, connect to on our website or on our um, Synergy Moon Facebook page. Uh, we also have an email address, info at synergymoon.com or kevin at synergymoon.com uh, that you can use to uh, make inquiries or just to get more information about the, uh, the art project or about the uh, the film project. We're currently working on a film called um, Synergy Moon Above and Beyond. Uh, parts of that film will be used um, as a payload on our uh, moon. Uh, the film in total will be probably completed late this summer in the fall and we'll be using that as one of the tools to help uh, publicize the uh, this race to the moon, publicize what we're doing, what the GLXP is doing. And one of the programs that you're actually currently looking for people to sign up for is your Buzz Aldrin Innovation Institute. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and screen share that website that people can go to um, if, if someone would like to introduce what this is for our audience. Uh, sure. The Buzz Aldrin Innovation Institute um, is a... Um, well, it's, it's part of an organization that's run by Maria Catalina. Uh, she has an organization called the Astronaut Teacher Alliance, um, and they have 
within that organization uh, locations, which are called Spaceport Academies. So the Buzz Aldrin Innovation Institute is a Spaceport Academy that's uh, located in Southern California near San Diego. Um, what they plan to do and what they're starting to do there is to run programs that involve middle school uh, students. Uh, they're involving them in uh, projects that range from um, astrobiology, uh, putting together uh, greenhouses and projects that would show how we would grow food, uh, create air, help with recycling on the moon or on Mars, uh, to projects where kids are working on small rovers. Uh, they have some kids who are veterans of the first robotics program that are now working with us at the Buzz Aldrin Innovation Institute working on uh, small versions of rovers. Uh, hopefully we might be able to take one of their small rovers with us uh, on our lunar lander to the moon. So, so Nancy Graziano, who's out in the audience, uh, says that she loves uh, your robot, uh, your rover design rather, um, and love is in all caps, so you have a fan out in our audience. Um, so, so this is a high risk. Uh, Neb, you clearly having sailed uh, a lot understand high risk with your own life and now we're doing high risk with rovers. Um, and, and we have Adam Synergy is, is uh, asking um, or stating what happened to you two uh, shows us that getting a fully functional robot to work well on the moon is not easy. How confident are you that everything will go to plan? Um, and, and I also guess I'd ask, how do you turn this into a teachable moment if it doesn't go to plan? Uh, uh, Neb, can you talk about the high risks involved with going to the moon? Uh, high risk <laughs> going to the moon? Uh, can you tell me high risk walking across the street? <laughs> it's a high risk all the time, so of course, uh, look, uh, how many Apollo missions wa was before uh, Apollo 11? How many failures before was a success? You know, so, uh, you know, this failure is not failure. If you look at it as a failure, failure is always test. So if something blows up, blows up, but at least you try. If you don't try, you don't know. So. If we land and something doesn't work, holy crap, we do it again, you know. Or, uh, what, you, 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 cannot <laughs> look, you cannot do nothing else, at least we are not sending people yet on the moon. So what, we just say goodbye to our rover and say, nice trip, you know, even if it crashed, at least we hit the moon. You know, even if we miss the moon, I would be happy, you know, <laughs> at least we shoot to the moon, you know, shoot to the stars. If we miss the moon, then we go to the deep space, which is even better than this GRSP. Uh, that higher, well, higher, really, these risks and everything, it's, uh, look, you cannot predict nothing, it's, it's far away from that, but uh, look, uh, there, uh, there, there is no any other way to know it before you do it, as simple as this. I will jump in that uh, question to uh, say uh, that this is what, what we're doing and um, we are highly confident uh, in the materials and uh, motherboards all the circuits that we have, it's space control, it's, uh, it's made just for the space. And since we know that uh, there's a, a moon day and moon night on the moon, uh, the rover needs to hibernate during the moon night, you know, and we have to wake up uh, during the moon day. So uh, during the moon night, uh, the temperatures are very low, and that's the uh, parameters that we are testing right now in uh, special chambers uh, which are uh, designed to go uh, to minus uh, 120 degrees uh, Celsius. So uh, I hope, uh, okay, we did the test and it, it went very well. As far as uh, motherboard, mother circuits and uh, all the equipment, it was very, very good. Uh, I have to say that that rover that you just saw, it was a prototype. Uh, the real rover is uh, undergoing his uh, building in the workshop right now, and uh, we will soon um, have uh, access and videos to all of our stuff that we are making. You know, we have uh, do the little bit redesign with the wheels and the traction control and everything, uh, including the camera and Wi-Fi system, uh, all the uh, gyroscopes and uh, Etc. Etc. I cannot uh, pronounce it well in English, so 
Uh, anyway, I'm highly confident in the thing that we are doing right now, and uh, I hope, I really hope that we'll that it will run more than 500 meters uh, on the moon, and that at least it will survive for a few months or even a year. Can I? Yes. Can I please add one more thing? Go ahead. Final. Because yes. we were asking about these high risks and this selling and everything. Uh, one thing that we didn't mention as well, because uh, interorbital systems, they are also developing this for uh, space tourism as well, for taking people up in the space. And uh, I'm the first, I said, uh, guinea pig or test pilot or call it whatever, on uh, their first uh, flight for uh, two people, I'm going to sit on that rocket. So this is how confident I am in a uh, random road. I'm going to put my life on their rocket because, first of all, I want to go to space, and second of all, I know she will never put me on the rocket that she doesn't trust it will work. So that's... That's, that's true, and, and do you, in, in terms of, uh, of um, risk mitigation, you know, I mean, we, we all have to take a risk, you know, every day, as Neb said, walking across the street or every day we get out, but uh, just um, uh, to, to be sure that we have the best functioning uh, vehicle, uh, to carry this precious cargo to the moon, or to carry precious cargo like Neb, right? Uh, we we do these test flights, and and even though we're carrying paying customers payloads on our satellite launches, those are still essentially test flights for the manned vehicles. Our our goal is to set up a manned and cargo transportation system between Earth and Moon, and that's always been the goal of interorbital systems. And I, I'm trying to remember the, the exact quote, so, so pardon me if I, I screw it up. I'm not finding as quickly as I'd like. I recently saw uh, with the Mars Curiosity, they didn't use the standard failure is not an option tagline. Uh, they, they tried instead, uh, I believe it was strive to do great things. They changed it. And, and I appreciate the fact that Failure is an option because if you don't fail occasionally, you never achieve great things. And and this is just a really great attitude that, that you're communicating I, out to so many I people. I have a better one. I have a better one. I have a better one that we yeah. use all the time, which is, uh, you know, it's not made by NASA or all these big guys. It's made by me one night, which is like most people go to bed to dream. Only few get up from bed to live their dreams. And we are one of the few. I had to say it. Sorry. <laughs> No, that that's an absolutely great way to, to think of it. Is, um, yeah, and and I've I've seen it. Uh, Ian Fleming's I think started this with some people uh, die before they ever live, and some people live until the moment they die. And all of us right now are in our own separate ways, striving to make everything great. Now I'm going to ask all of you for one final comment uh, for, for our audience, but before we do that, I just wanted to remind our audience that this is part of a series of Hangouts uh, that the Google Lunar X Prize uh, Foundation has put together so that you can get to know each of the different teams. Uh, our next Hangout is going to be on May 27th, and we're going to be inviting on the Penn State Lunar Lions team and Omega Envoy. These are two different teams that have worked really hard to involve university students in the teams that are striving to get to the moon, row 500 feet, fly, walk 500 uh, meters, rather, and then send a signal back to Earth. Um, you can catch all of these videos on YouTube if you don't watch them live. We have prior episodes uh, that we'd love to invite you to go in and learn more about the mission, learn more about uh, the milestones and everything else involved with the Google Lunar X Prize uh, awards that these different teams are, are striving toward. Uh, you can find these videos uh, at the Astrosphere Vids channel and on the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, if you would like to do your own explorations of the moon, uh, well, not everyone can join a Google Lunar X Prize team, but you can all follow along online at the Google Lunar X Prize Foundation website, and you can help map out the moon at CosmoQuest.org, which is where you can find me most days. Um, 
I'm going to start start with you, Amir. You you work with students. Uh, you get to see the next generation getting excited. If you can leave our audience with one thought, what do you want them to walk away with remembering? Well, that's uh, pretty okay. Um, since I was a little kid, and I always told you that uh, I was into the stars, uh, and uh, I was in one day to travel. Beyond uh, in the universe, you know, and uh, to the space and visit alien planets, and maybe it's funny, but it was my kid dream, you know. And some, some of that dream is already, um, yeah, come true. And uh, what I want to say also is that I'm looking through the telescope every night when it's a clear sky, and I'm the part of the journey. You know, since thousand, thousand years uh, ago, we always astronomers you know we should look to the stars and know how to behave, how to cut our land, how to move to make some food, um, how to survive when it's winter coming, when it's fall, when it's spring time, and when it's summer. So space, space is uh, something to say. Unbelievable, something, something beyond our minds, and uh, I think everybody should uh, involve themselves in the space and try to be a part of you know, at least stargazing or uh, some astronomy classes or astro robotics. Everything helps. That that is that is excellent. And I also want to say. That um, thanks to Maria Catalina, our team leader, uh, I already included lots of elementary and middle school classes uh, to a project of uh, late astronaut Sally Wright Earth Camp. So uh, every year, every four uh, season, so we have one mission, and four missions by every season, whether it's spring, summer, uh, fall, or winter mission. We are taking uh, pictures of Earth from the International Space Station, which is uh, amazing. And uh, students uh, can see their planet from the Earth, and they can actually do some uh, scientific work uh, in space by looking at the picture and uh, analyze the pictures of uh, clouds, uh, geology, geography, and whatever you want. So uh, it took very interesting in Bosnia and uh, every mission. I have uh, lots of lots of uh, students and professors from uh, even universities are coming to my uh, to our astronaut, astronomical society players who are uh, asking us to help them uh, help the, those children and uh, students understand what is space, to help them understand how the uh, universe works. Let them understand how to use telescope and basic things about astronomy. That that's awesome, Kevin. What what would you want to leave our audience with? Well, I think I to leave everyone with um, a new perspective on the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, it's more than just a competition. I think the X Prize is um, more of a movement. Uh, it's a movement to bring uh, everyday people, to bring everyone into space. Uh, we've had a space race uh, that started between the United States and the um, ex-Soviet Union, which grew into space exploration, uh, still government-run, but involving more and more scientists. Um, in my lifetime, we've sent space probes to pretty much every corner of our solar system, uh, and We've sent people into orbit um, and once for a very brief period to the moon. The Google Lunar X Prize is reigniting uh, our movement into space by taking private people, bringing the private sector into uh, the space uh, field. We're putting together private teams, teams like ours, which have no government uh, connection. Indeed, it's one of the rules of the Google Lunar X Prize that you can't have more than 10% government financing as part of your team. So we're 
we're trying to bring humanity into space. We're starting off by going to our nearest neighbor, the moon. The Google Lunar X Prize is actually building an industry to send people to the moon and back, an industry that will create the communications that we need to be able to communicate with folks on the moon and back. Um, it's taking everything out of the hands of governments, out of the hands of military, and putting it into the hands of humanity in general. Um, I really appreciate that aspect of the Google Lunar X Prize, and I really want that to be the message that I leave for everyone else. GLXP is about more than who wins this race to the moon. It's about getting everybody into space. That That's an awesome future to work on imagining. And and Randa, as, as humanity works to try and get off this one rock, you're one of the people who's making it possible. What, what thoughts would you want to leave our audience with? I'd say stopping at the moon is not an option. On to Venus, on to Mars, on to Titan, Europa, and beyond. That, I, I think every planetary scientist in the United States who heard that just did a little happy dance at their desk. Um, that, that is the future that we need. There's so much out there that is so awesome that fiction can't get near the truth of the awesomeness of just Titan and Europa, let alone everything else. Now, you're, you're one of the visionaries who had the courage to say, yes, let's do this. What, what do you want the audience to think about? Okay, first, uh, for, uh, for our audience from Bosnia, if somebody is watching, if he's not watching live, they will watch it uh, as recorded. I was saying in my language, osjećam mi ono gure kao svemir da mu jebe milosno majku. Verujte mi. That's for our audience in Bosnia. And uh, for my skydiver friends who are lining up to ride on our rockets and to skydive from, from, from uh, Randa's uh, rockets and everything, especially to all of Zipser and everything, we pre-fly the black sky. And for the whole, everybody else is just peace, you know, just peace. Everything else doesn't matter, just peace, be happy, you know. And I'm not saying that as a blah, blah, it's really just peace. Space is about, space exploration is about peace, peace among humanity, you know, about no borders, no limits, no, no nothing, it's peace. People, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'd like to, to give a shout out for the folks at Astronomers Without Borders who are currently running an astronomy poetry contest um, and remind everyone that it's one sky that we all share and I know some of the Astro Balance people at Synergy Moon are working with the Astro Art people at Astronomers Without Borders and thank you for being part of building a global community that is striving to get humans off this rock one small rover at a time. Um, thank you all for being such excellent guests. I remind our audience once again, the next Google Lunar X Prize Team Hangout is going to be May 27th. And please keep tuning in, keep learning, and let's all keep exploring our solar system and beyond together. Thank you so much. <laughs>